That's why it's in the bulletin. And you can follow along there as well. Don't feel like because it's on the screen, you shouldn't open your Bible. I don't ever want you to feel like you shouldn't open your Bible. Amen. You need to open your Bibles. You know, today is part of Valentine's Day weekend. And we've been looking over this last few weeks at the word love and what that means and a couple different aspects of that. This being Valentine's Day weekend, I hope all of you lovebirds spent some time together. I do. I hope you took time and you got some time alone with that one person that is so special to you. That's part of what we've been talking about for the last two weeks and today as well. So keep that love that happens between you special. And yes, I can say that from the pulpit. It's a good thing. God gave us marriage. He gave us relationship. Right. Amen. Let's yes. celebrate. Amen. So we've been looking at a few different aspects this past month. It's kind of a way to honor this holiday of love. As we close out the sermon series today, I want to ask you to ask yourselves a couple questions. Ask yourself, ask, ask yourself if you truly believe you love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Also, will you ask yourself if you have been honestly thinking, if you have honestly realized your own self-worth? 
Like I asked you last week, do you believe you matter? Now this morning, we're going to look at how we love others. I believe we have to start this study by reviewing a little bit. Especially as I look out, because all of you have not been here all of the weeks of this study. So I just feel like we need to look at some of this that we've already talked about. See, I asked you to ask yourself those questions that we just talked about, the ones that are still up there. Because you have to honestly consider how these work if you want to consider how you love your neighbor. You do. So in review, we started a couple weeks ago by asking, how do I love thee? Remember Kate came up and read the poem for us? How do I love thee? Meaning, how do I love God? And we looked at the Shema. Remember the Shema? Which I explained is the verses found in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. Verses 4 and 5, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. If you were to open your Bible or your electronic device this morning and look at Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 6, you'd see that this is when Moses was coming down from the mountain and he was sharing what it means to follow the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments. We've all heard them. Our children are actually in the back learning them. And they're really trying to trip me up. Barbara and I keep on trying to learn them. Because they're learning children's style. And we have to learn them children's style. <coughs> Which you would think would be really simple. Except, has anybody here ever tried to quote a verse that you already knew like all of your life? But you tried to quote it in a different version? Uh-huh. You get mixed up. And it's really easy to do. So, the Ten Commandments. We know the Ten Commandments are a big part of who we are because they are the part that started the law. They're the part that God wrote on some tablets and gave to Moses to give to the people. Now Moses is telling them how they're to conduct themselves in their daily life, as well as in their worship. That's the Shema. Open your Bible, maybe this afternoon, Deuteronomy 5 and 6, and read that. Moses is making it very obvious that the Lord God is first. Love originates with God. Love flows from God. So we can't truly love without God. That's what 1 John 4, she read 3, 4, 7 through 12 is saying. And we've all heard at least verse 8. We've all heard at least verse 8. It's quoted as saying, God is love. We've all heard that. Sometimes that's quoted out of context. But we've all heard that. It says so much more though. So let me share it with you. Starting in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love, does not, the one who does not love does not know God. For God is love. That's the little part of that whole verse that we like to quote. But this is the love of God. I'm sorry. But this love of God was manifested in us. That God was sent, has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also 
ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us. And His love is perfected in us. According to this, we cannot truly love if we don't know God. How many of you, and you don't have to don't have to go like this, but just kind of let me see you. How many of you know somebody that claims to be in love? Okay. How many of you know somebody who claims to be in love that you know for sure that they don't really attend a church? You can go a little, a little slower. Hide, hide that in a little bit. Right? How many of you claim to, to or say you know somebody that claims to love or be in love, does not go to church, and maybe even would say, I don't believe in any of that stuff? Okay? According to this, we don't know love if we don't know God. You hear that? So this deal with loving God is a very big and important thing for anybody who follows God. It's not really an optional thing. It's not really something that we can decide when we're going to love God and when we're not going to love God. It's not like we can love God here, but, you know, when I'm going to do that thing that I'm addicted to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to kind of hide and think that God's love isn't there at that point. No, sorry. God is love because God is what we need to understand love. And I think it's safe to say, if you read this passage right, you will not understand love without God. <clears throat> when we come to the point of accepting Jesus into our lives, we call that salvation, right? When we come to the point of accepting Jesus into our lives, something comes alive in our spirit. This something is new life. It's new life. And it gets us excited about how free we feel. Going back. I know I just prayed this, but I'm going back. Remember last week's video? It's the love of God that gives us this freedom. And we can only know true love by knowing Him. We also talked about loving ourselves. It's necessary for us to love ourselves before we can move on to today's thought. See, we have to understand that we matter to God. And we matter to others before we can honestly, truly love other people. You have to know love. Love is God. You have to know the love of God. Meaning... You know that you are loved before you can love somebody else. Hmm. We have to understand that we matter to God and we matter to others before we can honestly love other people, even with the love of God. Even with the love of God. You can't love somebody else if you don't believe that He loves you, even in God's love. <coughs> trying to say this as easy as I can. You cannot love somebody else with God's love if you don't accept God's love. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I've been doing that a lot these last couple weeks. Loving others is not really always wanting to hang out with them. You and I can share God's love with others without hanging out with them all the time. We can't. Love is bigger than friendship. Love is bigger than relationship. Love is bigger than family. When we live in the love of God, love permeates all we are 
and all we do. That means that it is everything in us and through us if we're living in it all the time. If God is love, then you and I, those of us who claim to follow God, live every day, all the time, in His love. That's what it means. Every day, all the time, we can experience God's love. It brings us to the thought that we're considering this morning. How can we truly love others? See, that's the key, right? Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. We get it. Put God first. We get that. That's not so hard. But loving somebody else? Oh, if they go to my church, that's fine. Uh, you know, if, if I work with them and they're pretty decent people, that's fine. Uh, if they're in the family... And they're not too crazy? Okay. Jesus told the expert in the law who was testing him on how to be true, a true follower of God. A true follower. That was happening in Matthew 22. And I quote that all the time. This guy, this group of Pharisees and Sadducees were actually listening to what Jesus was saying. And when Jesus put the Sadducees in their place, the Pharisees kind of jumped in. I'm going to stop there because all of you haven't heard me say this. Do you know who the Pharisees would be today? You and me. It's the people that go to church. The Pharisees got it. They were the followers of the Torah. They were the ones that believed. They were the ones that followed. We are the Pharisees of today. They jumped into this and they decided they were going to put Jesus in his place. So that's when the, the guy said to him, Okay, teacher, what do I have to do to inherit eternal life? And that's the quote that I keep quoting and I keep hoping that we'll actually catch. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And then love your neighbor as yourself. I think this is a good place for me to say this one more time. You really can't love others if you don't love yourself. See, I think that's what we struggle with the most, loving ourselves. That's why I keep saying it. Do you see that in Jesus' words? Because he says, love your neighbor as yourself. It implies the love of self. The video this week is called The Jesus Memo. It goes pretty quick on the screen, but if you're willing to listen to the message, I think you'll see why Barbara and I thought it was so good and why it fits so well. <coughs> as followers, we're given the task of loving as we are loved. Let's see if we can grasp this idea together. Because 
there something you need to read? It was written just before you that Jesus came up. An open letter to you, me, all of us. As we start a new school year, a new year, a new day, let's take a moment to stop and reflect, to be honest with ourselves. It wasn't that long ago we felt like an outsider. It wasn't that long ago someone made fun of us. It wasn't that long ago we felt worthless. So this year, whether we're in first grade, sixth grade, whether we're a junior in high school or a junior in college, whether you work in the back room, the boardroom, let's ask Jesus to lead us so we can speak up for those who don't have a voice. Be kind to everyone because their day is probably worse than yours. Love. And don't just use your words. Use your actions. Be last. Jesus did not come to be served, but to serve. Find the person without a friend. You know who they are. They are waiting for you. Today can be different. Will be different. Different. Be Jesus to everyone. The Jesus memo. good person. It's about being like Jesus. Now let's ask ourselves, how do we know what love is? The answer is found in 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, where it says, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whatever has, whatever has the world's goods and sees his brother in, I'm sorry, but who, whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in needs and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in him? Little children, let us not love with word or with tongue, but in deed and truth. This passage suggests that we are to love other people in the same way Jesus loved us. Can you imagine a God who would ask you for that kind of sacrifice? I mean, truly, can you imagine a God who would ask you to sacrifice like Jesus sacrificed for us. Obviously, he doesn't understand the wrongs people have done to us. Obviously, he doesn't understand how bad those people from up north really are. Or how ridiculous it would be for me to love that guy who's always trying to get over on me. Or how stupid I would have to be to love my boss who's trying to have me fired. Or how bad it would look for someone in my family to love someone that's that color. Or that nationality. Are you following me yet? I heard a preacher on one of my podcasts that I listened to talk about... Jonah this past week. I haven't done a lot of the research. I did check, but I haven't done a lot of the research. But this preacher was talking about the city of Mosul. Mosul is located in northwestern Iraq. It's the city, Stephen says I'm right, it's the city that's most associated, listen to me, it's the city that's most associated with the militant group ISIS. Now I'm sure that all of you have heard of ISIS. 
right? If you haven't heard of ISIS, go like this. Okay, good. I don't have to. Okay, I'll, I'll explain that to you in a little bit. ISIS, let me just do that now. ISIS is a group that has taken upon themselves to make a <coughs> example of people. Thank you, whoever just said that. Make an example of people that don't follow their way of thought. They're the ones that we keep hearing about in the news that cut off people's heads. That's ISIS, okay? The point he made in his sermon is the same one that I was trying to make, and I heard his sermon, and I was like, wow, that's it. Can you imagine what it looks like to love people associated with ISIS? Jonah was told to go to Nineveh and share that God's impending destruction was coming on them. You know Jonah, I hope. It's a book found in the Old Testament of our Bible. Jonah was a prophet. He heard from God. He talked to God. He listened and followed God. And he knew God. And God told him to go to Nineveh and share that he was about to destroy their city. And Jonah decided to go the other way. Why do you think Jonah decided to go the other way? See, he didn't want to love these people. And he knew his God. God is love. He knew his God. He knew if those people would listen, and change their ways, God would forgive them. Jonah didn't want God to forgive them. They cut off his friend's head. They were terrible. They were ridiculous. There's no way God should ever forgive them. So Jonah went the other way. My guess is, most of us would feel the same about ISIS. <coughs> After all, this is the group that's kidnapping people, videotaping as they cut their heads off, and putting it online so that they can send a message of hate. Right? I mean, that's what we think, right? That's what we all believe, right? How can God expect us to love someone like that? But Jesus tells us to love as we are loved. He says that we are to share his truth with all who will listen. He says we will not experience his love and its intended to be experienced, remember that, it is intended to be experienced if we don't show this unconditional love to others. That's pretty tough. That's pretty straightforward. It's pretty incredible. It's pretty impossible. Why would Jesus ask us to do something impossible? So when you start talking about how hard it is to love others, think about who you might be asked to love. Most of us are not being sent to ISIS. Most of us are not being asked to go to ISIS and share the love of God. Most of us are not being asked to go to other countries to love people to Jesus. Most of us aren't even being expected to go to another county <coughs> to show somebody God's love. But we are expected to love whoever God puts in our path. And we're supposed to love them with the same love that Jesus shows to us. 
Think about this love God shows you. Jesus didn't ask you to quit your habits so he could love you. He didn't ask you to clean up your life so he could give you the freedom of your soul. He didn't ask you to change your likes and dislikes so he could send you a comforter. But if you read the scriptures, you see that he did ask you to, date, to lay down your life. He did require you lay down your life and your desires and allow him to show you his desires for your life. He did ask you, all of us who claim to follow him, he did ask us to deny ourselves, take up our cross, and follow him. Amen. It's found in Matthew 16, 24. This means we're supposed to put away our own wants. <coughs> At least if they come between us and God. And we're supposed to take on the things that he gives us as we follow him to eternity. There's only one way to love other people like God loves us. There's only one way to love other people like God loves us. And I want you all to read it with me today. <coughs> that way, we will all know what has to happen if we truly want to know what love is. It's found in the book of Romans. You can open your Bibles or your electronic device or you can read off the screen. It's found in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. And it says this. Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable to God and perfect. Do you want to know the love of God? Do you need to ask Him to fill you with His love? Is there anything standing between you and the love He died to give you today? We call this act of faith being Entirely sanctified. That's the Church of the Nazarene's term. It means to do what we just read in Romans. Lay ourselves down and allow the Holy Spirit to live in us and through us. It's only through His infilling that we can truly love God. And it's only through His infilling that we can truly love His creation. The truth is, we can't love without Him because we can't understand what true love is without Him. But when we make the decision to become a living sacrifice for Him, He renews our mind. And He gives us a life of love. Will you stand with me? I'm going to play a song. I don't have any idea what it's going to sound like. But I'm going to play a song on the piano. I'm going to open these altars. I'm going to invite you anywhere you want to go in this room to pray. But if there's anything standing between the love of God... <coughs> that's exhibited through Jesus Christ who came as the creator the all powerful the all knowing the most that you could ever fathom bigger than you can ever figure out anything standing between that person and you I'm asking you to lay it down today 
Because He wants you to know His love. That's why Jesus died. So you would know His love. He wants you to know His love. He wants you to experience His love. And then He wants you to love other people with that love. Again, I don't know what's going to play. But I'm asking you to focus on Jesus. struggling with what it means to love somebody that might be affiliated with somebody like Isis. Listen to this. When we love God, and we allow Him to love others through us, it's not our love. It's not something we have to work out. It's as we follow God, He just loves us and He loves them. So don't get hung up on who you might have to love. Instead, ask yourself, do I love Jesus? Am I willing to accept what he's done for me? And let him change you right where you are. Lord God, we come to you now thanking you that we can come into this place, that we can worship you in song, that we can worship you as we read your word and hear what you have for us. And God, I ask that you would put <coughs> each one of us into your hands today, that you would mold us into your image, and that you would make us into the people that we need to be to make a difference for you everywhere we go, wherever you send us, as we walk in your spirit. Help us, Lord, to love you, to serve you, and to serve others in your name. And we give you glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.